Hello everyone, this is the next part of tutorial and we are gonna adjust uh, things that we've created on the next part. So, I've also added equation mark and uh, needed configuration for perception handler, like I added runaway actors to my stack. And uh, what we're gonna do? I think that we even don't need to rotate to a player by the way, so rotate to face is not needed. What we're gonna do is uh, now is show this question mark or whatever it is with a little bit animation so that it will not just appear. So let's open uh, uh, base pp animal parent and here on set state event. Also, I will disconnect it from set hidden. I will just copy and paste it here and do it like this. Also, on attack, we're gonna do the same as, as on idle. We will hide this mesh. No, not on attack. On runaway. What we're gonna do? We're gonna. Before we. Unhiding this static mesh uninterrupted, we're gonna set its scale to zero. So let's get static mesh and set scale 3D, set relative scale to zero. Next, uh, the thing we need to do, we're gonna set scale 3D back to one. It is one? No, it is zero one. So we're gonna set it to zero one scale. Let me disconnect it, duplicate it, and plug it here. And new scale is gonna be a vein turp. So current scale is zero 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 and target is zero one zero one zero one. Delta time is world delta seconds, and the turf speed is gonna be one, like this. And after all of this, we gonna set it unhidden. Also, the same is gonna be here on, on an idle animation. We gonna do it, but we gonna interp from. 0, 1, 0, 1 to 0, 0, 0. And current, current is gonna be uh, get static mesh relative scale, get relative scale 3D because maybe I will change it in future and it will not give us some issues. So uh, let's start. And they don't see me. And uh, interpolation, reinterpolation doesn't work here because tries to reach on distance from current position, giving a nice smooth. Okay, interrupt speed. Maybe if I will make it like this, it will work clearer. No. Um, where is my yes? Here is my animal parent. On interrupted, I'm setting scale to zero, and then setting a new scale to zero one. Hmm. New hidden is false. Well. Let's do it in another way. Let's create timeline. I'm gonna add a timeline scaling alpha, and we're gonna play from start. And on update, we're gonna set new scale, and set new scale is gonna be lerped from. Zero 
0, 0 to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, e 0, 1, yes. And an alpha is going to be some value in this timeline. So let's open timeline and add the flow track. Call it alpha. Add a new key. Um, add key. At 0, it is going to be 0. 0, 0. And uh, I think that on a half of a second it will appear. On half of a second it's going to be 1. And that's all. Close timeline. And lerp 100 of A when alpha is 0. Okay. And plug in alpha here. And the same gonna be. We don't need to set scale here to 0. Let's delete this. And. Uh, Set in relative scale to zero, also gonna be through and through this timeline. Can we use the same timeline here? No, the timeline. Okay, so here we're creating a new timeline. Also, the same just with uh, another name or with this one no we cannot scaling alpha idle and now we're just gonna replace so a is gonna be zero one zero one zero one and b is gonna be zero 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 place it here and on update we're setting a relative scale to b and on finished on finished, we're gonna set it hidden like this. So let's test it. Start. Someone saw me. Okay, as you have seen this deer, this flag is animated correctly. But this function on animal parent is called a few times because of our behavior tree. Because 15 seconds passed and we ran this function again. Now let's add a function to run. Let's add a runaway logic for now. So here we're going to make a new sequence. Sequence. And what it's gonna be? We're gonna set state at first. Gonna set state, but state is gonna be a runaway or attacking. So for now we can just pass runaway because we're doing uh, deers that always run away. But if we will have uh, some, uh, but if we will have some. Oh, attacking animals like wolves, bears, will have to pass uh, an attack. Oh, but but it is fine. Okay, and here we're gonna pass run away and call this sequence run away. That's the first thing that we have to do. Run away. Next. We need to create a task to get a random location, but not a random location like this. We're going to get a random location far from a player in an opposite direction of a player. So let's create a new task. BT task blueprint based and call it get location opposite to Opposite to actor. Okay, here we have to pass our instigator. So we're gonna make a variable actor and it is gonna be blackboard key selector. Make it public. Let's make execute um, event receive execute 
AI. And uh, we're gonna get an actor and read oh get value as actor. Now what we need to do we need to get a forward vector of our actor. So what we gonna do? We're gonna find let me close this, open this one, and here is our deer. For example, uh, let's let me add BP main character here. So if a deer saw a character on the left side, it should not it should run back. It should run forward or it should run uh, on the right, but it should not write here or here or here. So, how we can do this? Let's open a task and let's add a new function here generate location. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna get random location, random reachable point, and radius. Okay, what's gonna be an origin? Let's uh, pass our uh, pawn here. This is gonna be a pawn. And get actor location. Also, no, we don't need to get a forward vector of our actor because our actor may look in a pos opposite way, like this. And its forward vector is gonna be this. Or it should look like this and its forward vector is gonna be this. So forward vector will not help us and I will delete this. Okay, generate in location and this is gonna be an origin. Now we have a radius also. Let's promote it to variable and make it public and make it 3000 by default okay we will generate this point what is gonna be next we are gonna check whether a direction in which our deer will run to reach this point is uh, a direction to a player. So, what we need to do? We need to find a look at rotation and start location is actor location and and location is this one random location and we're gonna receive a rotator what can we get from a rotator we can get a we can calculate a direction no 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 not a direction uh, we can get a forward forward vector of uh, this movement Next, we're gonna get our actor that was an instigator, read value, get value as an actor. And uh, next thing that we need to do, we need to find the same forward vector. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna find, look at, rot at rotation, get start is gonna be an actor location like this. I don't know how to make it cleaner. Um, like this. Okay. And the end will be an actor that instigated a runaway. So get actor location. And we should get a 
forward vector. So what should we do next? Next thing that we have to do, we have to check whether uh, these two vectors uh, differ from each other. We need to check their difference. So let's check with an equal. And we have some error tolerance. But I'm not sure how this. Okay, it's single precision. Okay, we have an error to tolerance from 0 to 1. And we gonna use an error tolerance like 0, 5. Next. If it is true, true, then we gonna call generate location again. Get pawn and so on. And if false, we gonna return this generated location. Plug it here. Uh, like this okay and also here we also should return this location that's it I hope that it will work and now we're gonna do this and here we're gonna generate location on event execute AI and we're gonna call AI move to to this random location and the pawn that is moving is controlled pawn next what we should do next we should also make our AI to run and not just walk so we are gonna but we don't need to make it here this task is only for a move to okay it's called get location opposite vector we should uh, call it move to location opposite to vector so on success we're gonna call finish execute success on fail we're calling the same but without any success now back to our <coughs> behavior tree and let's rename our task. Let's open it in content browser and not get location. Let's move to location opposite to actor. And let's create a new task. Let's call this task BT task move to location opposite to actor. Actor is instigator actor. And after that, we gonna make our animal run so what how can it be done our ai movement component let's check what we have there component not not here just an ai ai movement component on event graph we have to call some function or just event let's create an event at custom event and call it set new movement state let's make it a variable set our movement state here and call update function like this okay next uh, what we sh what would should we do next of course create a new task Let's call it BT task set movement state. And uh, here we have we will have execute AI. We're gonna get control pawn cast to BP animal parent. Get movement component AI movement component 
and calls this function set movement state. And let's promote movement state to a variable and make it public. Compile, save. Also, finish, execute. Also, I don't remember. Did we add finish execute here? Yes. Okay. On behavior tree, now let's call this BT task set movement state to run. And after, and we should do that before moving to this location. Because this location is uh, will call finish execute only when and our deer will reach the point. Fine. Now, when should we call this event? We should add some uh, decorator. So let's right click, add decorator, and behavior is equal. And we are, we're gonna do that only when behavior is equal to runaway. Also, we should be ensure that we have an instigator actor, that we have it in the blackboard. So, let's uh, find out inst um, something like blackboard. And uh, key query is set. Instigator actor, if it is set. And if it is not set, we're gonna. We're not gonna do anything here. But if behavior has changed, then we're gonna abort all. Now, it should work, but I have one question because I don't remember. If my perception handler set it state to run, will it ever set it back to idle? No, it will not. So, it is running away. And uh, what should we do here? What should we do here? We should... Uh, We will add it a little bit later. Now let's check if a deer will run away from us. Okay, it saw us. But it is not running. And that's a good question why. It's not running because our perception handler didn't set a behavior to run away or not. So let's print some string. Hello. We'll print hello if uh, a behavior has been set to run away. No. And this happens because age of AI stimulus is when the last time it was updated and not how long do we see someone so we should not use an age here age will always be zero while we are staying there but we have to we have to set run away in some case. But in what case? I think that we can do it in some delay after interrupted has been set. We can do it in some delay if interrupted has been set, but what is an expiration age? I'm, I don't remember what is an expiration age. So let's print what is the value of an expiration age okay 
excuse me and expiration oh it doesn't update perception because i'm not moving mm -hmm. expiration age is not some, something that we need okay let me think how we gonna do that how we gonna set runaway state successfully sensed <laughs> let's 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 create a new function here called set behavior when we're gonna set behavior here make it a parameter like this and uh, hmm How should we do that? Okay, we've created this function, set behavior, and also we should pass an instigator here because we're gonna do this logic in separate function. So let's just uh, cut it from here and paste it here, like this. Behavior and instigator should also be a parameter. And let's call this function set behavior here from false we're gonna change it to an interrupted state and here we're gonna change it to runaway state runaway now let's go to behavior and we should uh, check if uh, if uh, we should check if behavior has changed by the way but we should if behavior is we should check here if behavior is uh, we're gonna get it if it is equal to runaway we should set timer by function name if true set timer by function name and function name is gonna be on run away let's create such function on run away and also uh, let's uh, promote this to a variable run away timer and the time is going to be an interruption time and also we should start this timer only if it's not started yet so here we're gonna get this runaway timer is maybe it has some um, what does it have it's struct so let's or no it's not no it's structure or what does it have timer get timer remaining time is timer activate active here we have a function is timer active by handle and it should not be active so not and add this condition here and boolean like this and add its 
connected to this branch. So if we are running away and timer is not running, is not active, then we're starting this timer. So on runaway, we're gonna call set behavior to state uh, interrupted. Oh, to state runaway. And uh, on not on runaway, on on interrupted. Oh, sorry, it's very late and. I'm missing something, so let's change it on interrupted. Okay, and here we should check if behavior is interrupted. Now it will change your state to run away. And we don't need this to break the stimulus here, and we don't need to set state to run away here. We just need to set behavior to interrupt it without any branches like this um, so also let's change a little bit a side of an animals so peripheral vision of 90 degrees is too much I will make it 60 and decrease uh, the length of the vision from 250 to 2000 and to lose sight to 50 to 2500 point view start it's enabled okay i just changed it for doe now doe don't see me and now it saw me question mark appeared And it didn't run away. Why? Uh, let's debug it again. And open set behavior. So here we're gonna print what behavior we are setting. Print behavior. Now it is interrupted for, for someone. Okay. Interrupted, interrupted, run away. So run away behavior was set, but it didn't run away. So let's open BT task and interruption should abort both. And run away should start only if behavior is run away and blackboard base condition. Instigator is set. But on perception handler, when we are receiving some side perception, we should not change it to interrupt it if it is already uh, run away. So let's check if get behavior is equal to run away. Let's add the branch. If it is equal to run away, then we're not doing it. If it is false, then we are setting behavior to interrupt it. Oh, let's test it again. So they saw me. And they are doing nothing. They are doing nothing. Maybe they are doing, but they don't have an animation at least. So, at first, I will open MPP Animal Parent and add set in state, so that it will be easier to us to see if something happened. I will just copy this, paste it here, and it is and run away is gonna do the same for me. But new mesh is gonna be exclamation exclamation mark. And after a delay of uh, one and a half second, it will become hidden again. Because as I, we can see, an animation stops working. So it sees us. No, yes, it sees us.
and it doesn't even have any animation why it doesn't move here instigator actor is not set or behavior tree is okay behavior tree should be run away so it stops execution of everything here even an animation playing and it should go here but let me remove this condition and try it again. Okay, they have started to run. This one is uh, trying to run without any animation. Now why? Oh, on success, on fail. It cannot generate a location or what? And why it happens immediately? Okay, question mark, exclamation mark. It started to run somewhere. Let's debug it a little bit. Uh, five, no, not five, six. Okay, we're debugging this one, but it cannot move there for some reason. Okay, it, it has called this sequence too much times. Am I right or it returns false every time? Uh, let's check print and if movement has failed then it will print us false or oh, it will print us hello no it doesn't print us hello okay it doesn't print us okay it cannot print us hello because I've tried to debug um, I've tried to debug an AI, so I will pause the video and restart the project. So I restarted a project and uh, let's open an animals and uh, let's open behavior tree back. So task move to location opposite to actor. I have also, for debug reasons, added this return node and the problem is not in uh, our generation so let's do it like this okay now we have to know how much time this function is called so let's print string here and call it name it fail to move we'll print fail to move if after generation generating uh, location our doll has failed to move but no and for some reason it is immediately changed okay one of them has failed to move but their exclamation mark should uh, appear only after interruption time after five seconds so I'll, let's print here a hello when the timer is set it up. I will delete delete two other doll dears and the one time hello is printed. Let's start it again. I don't know why it is printed. Oh let me rotate it like this so that it will not see me. And let me move here. Okay, he saw me and ran away to some location. Let's open this 
task and acceptance radius let's increase it to 20 and after it has successfully moved to some location we're gonna on our behavior tree let's wait let's wait for 10 seconds and see what happens Okay, it looks like he cannot reach some position he wants to move at. Looks like this. Also, let's print here how much time our move to is called. Maybe it is called a lot of times. So I'm gonna print hello every time that move somewhere is called. One time. Has stopped for 10 seconds. One more time, and it just can't stand here normally, or it cannot reach some location because he cannot move on a hill, or I don't know. Hmm. So we're setting state, movement state to run. Or maybe that's some problem with an animation. That's the second question, why an animation is not working. So let's fix an animation first. Let's open an ABT animal. Well, not an ABT animal, but deers. Animations work run for a doll. Okay, it should run like this, but it doesn't. So let's open ABP doll and see an overridden blend spaces. Work run doll, everything is fine. And in ABP animal in locomotion. Moment. Oh, I think that this happens because of this play animation. So we should stop. Stop. No, animate. Mm. I think that slot is uh, blocked by this montage and that's why an animation is not playing so I will disconnect play animation just for now and let's see if it will run. Yes, now it is running. Now animation is working correctly, I think. But, by the way, as you can see, we have some issues with uh, some question marks and with rotation speed. So, yes, we finally found what is the problem. The problem is in this play animation. So, let's open uh, our animal parent. And change the rotation speed back to... Back to 360, I think. Back to 360. And that's fine. Now, back to move to location. Let's remove a printing. And on generate location. What is the problem with this location? This location can be generated very close to a player. It can be generated too close uh, to a player, but uh, I mean not to a player. For example, this deer can generate a new location. For example, it can see a player, it, it can generate location right here, just in few meters from it, and run here, but that's not fine. I have to 
define that to I have to make it run at least at some uh, distance from its current location. So let's open our task, move to location opposite, and add a new variable. We call it minimum distance to run and call and uh, it's gonna be float and let's make it public. On receive execute AI before generate location, we should validate this minimum distance to run. It should be, let's set it, it should be a minimum min, where is it? Min between this distance and a radius. Because if we will uh, pass minimum distance to run as 5000 but radius of 3000 then we will never be able to generate such location so here we validate mean now we have to change our generate location so here we are returning our random location but we are not gonna do that we're gonna get on get actor location and count a distance distance vector to this generate location like this and here we are gonna check it if a distance is greater or equal than minimum distance to run and if, if not we are gonna recursively call this function again Okay, now let's open BT, allow our behavior tree and set some minimum distance to run to, for example, 1,500. One, 1, oh. Okay, now I don't know what to do with play animation, but first I would like to change, open my doe, no, not a doe, animal parent. And make this thing to work. So uninterrupted sometimes, as we can see, our static mesh is not visible. We cannot see it. And why this happen is a good question. Alpha. Oh, alpha is set it up correctly. Also, length should be not 5 seconds, but 1 second. Here. Next. Next. Also, let's do it in 0 half second, because animation is in 0 half. Okay. On attack. Oh, on runaway. We're gonna do the same zero and a half because no, we don't do anything on. Oh yes, on attack we are doing, we are making a delay and setting hidden game on update, but we should do it on finished, like this. Setting hidden in game. Here we're setting hidden game on finished, but finished will be called when five second will pass. But we need to call it when zero and a half second will pass. So maybe now it will be fixed. Oh no! What happened with him again? I don't understand. Okay, stack runs fine. I don't understand something is wrong with Oh with do so we're waiting ten seconds. Okay, ten s well we will wait five seconds. I didn't make Oh 
if the static mesh has a collision, that's the question. So, yes, let's disable collision for the static mesh and run it again. That's why we were unable to see it sometimes. Great, now it works. And uh, here I'm gonna increase a radius to 5 or even 7000, and minimum distance to run is gonna be 3500. Also, back to my animal parent, I'm gonna attach the static mesh to a skeletal mesh. And it should have uh, some socket. But we cannot do it on animal parent. We should do it on every oh parent socket. Why can I um, socket? Okay, I can. I can't. So we're gonna attach it to some socket by hand. So let's open back animal parent and add a variable called state mesh socket and it's gonna be name and in construction script we're gonna get static mesh attach to attach component to component. So we're gonna attach it to me skeletal mesh component and socket name is gonna be the static mesh socket name. I'm not sure that it uh, should be done this way. Maybe socket can be added uh, from somehow from this, but I am already very tired, so I will do it like this. And now on the pedo, I will open a skeletal mesh for where is it? Skeletal mesh for dough. Here it is. And here is gonna be our socket. No, not ponytail or head. Okay, let's let it be ponytail. Let's add a socket here and let's call it state socket. And let's add a preview asset called quest question mark rotate it like this scale it to zero one zero one zero one and plug it and put it here okay now back to animal parent let's change the scale base scale to one 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 because it will receive scale from a socket in the pedo and here and uh, not in construction component uh, where is my variable okay to show inherited variables i will toggle show inherited variables and state mesh socket is gonna be state socket now i'm gonna hide inherited variables back that's it but i don't want it to be rotated or i won't okay let it be rotated right like this it even looks interesting and i'm gonna do the same for a stack the same for a stack also shown here variables variables state socket <coughs> also uh, open a skeletal mesh skeleton select uh, mm, not a tail but ponytail and add uh, so not paste socket add socket and call it state socket also add preview mesh like question mark rotate it as I need scale it to zero one zero one and zero one and move it move it up 
So that's it. We made a lot of changes. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, we need to change our uh, timelines. Now we're scanning from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1. And from 1 to 0. Okay, let's start. So that's fine. Should not see it through a stone. Over here it is. And that's how it works. Now he can't hear us, but as you can see, I've stayed in front of him. And also, uh, there is a problem that we don't return back to an idle state, but we will do it in the next videos. Thanks for watching.